it's Janet from the Ed and Janet Show. Uh, we're here at Donna's house on our last episode of the season. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to sweet talk Ed into doing another one next year if, if we're in the same situation with COVID-19 as we are now. So we'll just see what happens. Anyway, thank you so much, Donna, for having us yes. here today to show us your lovely welcome. fall garden. <laughs> yes, welcome. <laughs> Donna is a member of our club. And uh, we're I've given a few hot, hot, hot hints along yes, the way too, and I there'll remember. be evidence, yeah, yeah. of that in the uh, in the garden yeah. uh, tour. It looks like there's a lot to say, a lot to see. But first, there can is. you tell us about your colorful shirt? Yes, yes. This is Orange Shirt Day. Uh, September 30th is the day where we do remember the. Uh, uh, tragedies that befell some of the children that were in residential school. Um, many, many children um, all over Canada uh, were subjected to residential school. Yes. And uh, fortunately, the reserves on this part of the peninsula do have treaties, and many of them were more uh, in day schools than in residential schools, but it still wasn't a very nice experience for them. No. So no. this is a special shirt for. Yeah, and I think uh, all of the day. school children are wearing orange shirts today I and, think and learning they are. about that. So yes, that's a great it's thing. It's pretty important. It is. Pretty important. Yes. Lovely. Well, tell us about all these wonderful things we're standing in front of. Well, these are uh, begonias. Oh, and, and dueling, dueling uh, hummingbirds. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, watch out. Okay. Yes. Um, these are uh, begonias, and I grow them every year. I save the corms and uh -huh. uh, uh, grow them each year and uh, there are 20 of them up there. Holy so, uh, cats, they go it, all the way along down to the They're all there, yes, yes, and they're in individual pots, which I found is a lot more effective uh, because I can keep control on the water. They don't like to be very wet, oh, Okay. so this is uh, um, a bit of a, an issue with them. Um, also, the beautyberry, it's kind of good to point out the beautyberry here. It's, uh, I did a very dramatic uh, trimming on it uh, a few years ago and was regretful at the time, but it's produced these wonderful long branches and it makes the, ra the um, robins extremely oh, happy. Good. Oh, I, well, there'll be a dozen robins that will descend on the, uh, on the beautyberry and just absolutely love love the uh, the berries it's an unusual plant that you don't see often and the berries are such a beautiful purple they it's are lovely. lovely yeah and they will cut too for for arrangements oh um, yeah uh, they will cut if you get them right at the right time so they don't all fall off oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you've got some lovely roses here and I yes. I like your uh, dr. Seuss well, tree you call that the dr. Seuss <laughs> tree right <laughs> we used to have a couple of those in front of the uh, the Empress which is such a shame that they took them down so yeah. thank you for not chopping it down yeah yeah well, they do have a certain character. We wanted a very narrow conifer. Yeah. And of course, it's the luck of the draw when you buy a tiny plant, oh, yeah. whether in fact it will end up being as narrow as you wish it to be. This is right, just right. Because yeah, some just of them right. go like that. Well, and those are, those often are sequoias. Oh, really? Because they're bluish. Oh, okay. uh, Whereas this is a chamacypress. This is actually a, a, a yellow, um, uh, yellow cedar. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Well, there's the hummingbird, too. Chamacypress. That's not yes. easy to say. Yes. Chamacypress nutcatensis. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You're one of those. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm a master gardener. Yeah. Oh, and and you, don't, you don't speak, you got to speak a bit of Latin when you're a master <laughs> gardener or else everybody, you know, common names just don't work. <laughs> Where would you like to take us next? Well, um, I think we can probably go through the gate here. Okay. I, I do garden in pots quite a bit, and we're just at the transition point of, uh, of, of the pots. Those look um, like spider I, I guess it would be useful to point out, too, um, the beautiful designs that are the designs of Chris Paul from Sartlip. Oh, yes. Um, Chris is, does blasted glass. He's more recently um, been doing some big metal pieces. Um, and so he, he's a good, close personal friend, and uh, Phil has carved with him. And this um, is your husband's studio. Yes, right here. this is his uh, studio and workshop. Lovely. And this is his incredible collection of, of rough turn bowls. Ah, he's a wood turner. <laughs> oh, he is a wood turner of some significance. He uh, right. sells it for turk gardens and, and a number of a number of places. Uh, 
but we can come through here. Sure. Of this little funky greenhouse that I have. Oh, wonderful. Let's go have <laughs> a look at that. Which is great fun. Orchids in there? Uh, there are cymbidium orchids, yes. Yeah, there's cymbidium orchids and a whole bunch of other things. Lovely. Yeah. I, I am a basket maker and a tile mosaicist, so oh. um, there's all kinds of stuff So you around. see a clay pot and you just have to do something. It, right. It, yes, right? I yeah, just, I see yes that. you can see that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good for you. All I right. Do. What a lovely back garden you have. It looks so natural. Yes, it, it's, it does benefit from uh, the, uh, the wood uh, turning uh, oh, yes. shavings that um, I... I darkened down and so on the beds is dark now and this is Raven. Hi Raven. <laughs> Raven is a is hi sweetie is a sweetheart. <laughs> oh good. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> she is. So say hi to Ed. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the Choisia. This is actually the yellow version, which is interesting because at this time of year, it doesn't have that much yellow. But boy, in the spring, all the new growth is really, really yellow, um, which is lovely here because it, this doesn't get a great deal of sun ah, in yes. here. You've got some maples, a lot of maples here. Oh, tons of maples. So you get lots not of to leaves, look up eh? at this time oh, of year. Yeah, they're coming down, my dear. <laughs> right. Well, and oh, look at this. I, I, if I do look up at it, I consider it yellow gold oh, because nice. they it compost beautifully. Yes. And, it, well, the collecting of it is, sure. is a bit tricky. Yes. But anyway, the... Um, 12 years ago, I totally redeveloped the garden, mm -hmm. and I hired a young student um, from UVic, mm -hmm. and um, Jake and I did all these retaining walls, and ah. did, uh, um, I had help from Robin Jones, who was a garden designer, and she helped me minimize the grass because that was important yes. and maximize the beds and then we put drainage tiles through all of the beds oh, okay. and the idea is that it's it's a it's a, a trail that goes through the garden that is made of grass oh, okay. yeah and uh, yeah it's uh, it's quite quite fun yeah. and what's that lovely tall yellow tree that there? is a rubinia, rubinia. Uh, or pseudo acacia oh, um okay. rubinia pseudo acacia it's a false acacia plant um which is my husband's a forester retired forester and he gets really disgusted when when things call, are called pseudo something oh. <laughs> but anyway it is a beautiful plant it was very, very popular about 25 years ago. So you can see around Brentwood Bay um, trees like this, ah, all of the same age or I similar see. age. Right. Because it was a trendy plant. Now here is um, the living willow hut. Oh, <laughs> look at that. And it's woven on the bottom. And yeah. I, I clean it on the bottom. I take the, the leaves off the bottom. And yeah. then... In January, approximately, um, all, it gets clipped, it gets coppiced at oh, the yes. top of that woven area. Right. So gradually over the years, the, the structure will get thicker and thicker and oh. thicker. And then this means that I have basket making material. How excellent. Um, that I can either use or share. I, right. I can collect much faster than I can make baskets. Wow. <laughs> but uh, it, it, it's, it's kind of... It's lovely. And it's my seven-year-old grandson and I play in it. Oh, I bet you do. I used to do the same thing with corn. Yes. Oh, yes. And my beans, my pole oh, beans for yeah. the kids. But this is cool because it'll just get bigger and bigger and bigger. It, it does. It yeah. does. It's not low maintenance. Um, uh, a lot of pruning. Well, there's a lot of pruning. Yeah. And, and then you have to figure out uh, what to do with the prunings. Right. I do make baskets with some of them, yeah. although I'm finding that it's it's a tough material to oh. use to make baskets because it's very strong. So I, I was going to point out um, the fall color of the, uh, the paratia and of the euonymus, the burning bush. Oh, lovely. Yeah. And those are the earliest ones. The, the burning bush is the, is the very earliest, and then the paratia uh, comes. Now, it's interesting because the central Saanich planted a paratia 
that's called Persian spire. It's a very narrow plant, whereas this parodia is extremely wide. It's oh, probably see that. 40 feet through. Yeah. Um, I, uh, the um, man that did the drainage lines um, wasn't really very good on his excavator, and, and he took that out and planted it um, up on a hill but I had to make a retaining wall because it was planted far too high for the for the health of the tree. But mm. obviously, <laughs> that was 11 years ago, and obviously it's, it's done doing very fine. well. Yeah, it's doing well. I tell you, really when fine. we came around the corner here, I thought this was the end of your garden, ah. and then we came over here, and here's all this. Oh yes, it took my breath away. Your yard is much bigger than than I had. Uh, well, I I had thought. hoped to make it seem like that yeah. so that it's a surprise as you come it through it certainly surprised me it takes me. a while <laughs> yeah it takes a while to recreate that oh i know i know. you're very lucky well, i mean this is in many ways yeah. i am what yeah a great when you have. i see the heap of leaves on the grass i don't feel tremendously lucky sometimes yeah. <laughs> just take the lawnmower and get yeah. your well i have a mulching mower oh, which really ah, helps yes. and that then it, it i i blow the leaves into the the lawn and then the, as the lawn grows i get this wonderful mixture of green grass and leaves that happens kind of early in in the season right. um later then it's straight leaves and that is what i use to make the ah, pathway I see that. Yeah. And also I've put on the vegetable part, this is all edible garden okay. here. Yeah. And on this vegetable part is um, uh, leaves, whole leaves. That was Linda Gilkison's suggestion. Mm -hmm. Whole leaves to stop the impact of our winter rains. Right. It, it is very, uh, this is a clay garden. Mm-hmm. Clay is wonderful because it holds moisture, it holds nutrients, but it's extremely dense, and yeah. a lot of the vegetables don't really like it. No, that's you know, true. They, yeah, they, yeah. They, they're not extremely happy. <laughs> uh, it's a good idea to mulch everything. Yeah. You know, it really does save things in the winter. And This garden suffers a bit from a lack of sunshine. Oh. Um, and so really I favor things that are happy in the shade. Yeah. But a lot of the plants that I really would like to have, of course, need have more sun. sun. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Yeah. And I then like your, your hebes. The hebes and, and, yeah, and the berberus. And I something about my garden which means that the hellebores absolutely adore this garden well they and do they like a little shade seed. don't they yes. yeah so do mine they like the shade yes yes yeah and yeah and they like the moisture and the re, you know moisture retention right which is which is great and lots of yeah. lovely ferns i i've left this side um on at the understory of the the um Maples, maples, uh, to be quite natural, so that there's the the um, nine bark, and there's this is a uh, cascara tree, and oh. my husband remembers cascara bark drying in the living room of their house in Alberta. Oh yeah, and it, so I kept it for that reason. It's not a particularly notable tree. I thought it was a dogwood. No, it's <laughs> actually a cascara. Huh. And it's a, a little bit, you know, it's leaning this way. Yeah, a little bit because of the tree, I guess. Right. Eh? Yeah. This little building um, was built uh, to be uh, a, a place to um, acknowledge the end of the, the trail. Oh, yes. Um, and uh, you can see this is one of my, um, my weavings here and one of my mosaics. Oh, that's beautiful. And this also, this bird, bird cage, birds <laughs> in the cage, those, yeah. that's the creation I've made. Those are all birds that are significant in my life. <laughs> I see you like woodpeckers and chickadees. That's right. Yeah. Yes. And sapsuckers. The, oh, yes. The sapsucker uh. has pretty much mined the, the the birch tree over there. I have one that that comes and does yeah. the same to mine. Well, yeah. they're lovely too. They're, they're like two they're so cats. Striking. They they speak to each other. They come in a pair in this garden. Yes. And they they speak to each other. They sound like cats. Yeah. Yeah. They do. They do do that. Well. And this is a little bit of an out of control um, fig fig and it has escaped i found do you know very, what kind of fig that is that's i it's a green fig okay i maybe a desert king it was it was here 
in a different spot. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be cutting it down because I've discovered the fact that fig bark makes beautiful baskets and smells like fig. Oh, lovely. <laughs> so um, do you think that it has grown through that? It has. It's yeah, gone through that. Okay, I, I, so it's going to say, yeah. oh, yeah, cats. I know. Yeah. It's, I, yeah, I've run into the, the very fig smelling root. Oh, yes. Um, out here in the garden. Wow. In the, in the, the um, path. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big this one. This is a project in progress. It's going to Making become a, a it's going to become a crevice garden. Oh. Um, uh, I just have to excavate soil. I I love projects, and if I you know I I need projects constantly, um, and this is one of them. And you know it was these plants were in this little the pond papyrus. Um, and, yeah, yes, it's papyrus, and uh, and then the carex, and. Uh, one of these days, uh, we'll get this done. Yeah, I do have That'll another. Look great there. Yeah, I do have another master gardener that um, that helps me in the garden. It, she's wonderful, and it's incredible to have that help. <laughs> yeah, and here's your burning bush. A closer yes, look at your burning the bush. Yes, Euonymus alata, I think, is the name of it. Um, I'll have to trust you on yes, that. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that fern is a special this, fern. I was going to say, that's very fern. unusual, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It, it is it is quite unusual. I was fortunate in that um, the previous owner from 12 years ago did have um, a, a pretty good eye for some of the textural plants. Yeah. And this fern is from it's there, really but it's neat. very happy. Yeah. Um, I have planted this, it's Solomon, Solomon Seal, seal mm -hmm. and it, it, it was planted here to reflect the um, structure behind oh, yes. it. You see it more actively in the spring. It, it kind of gets yes. lost I at have this one. time it, of they're, year. They're just, they're lovely. <laughs> yes, It's yes. one of my favorite this things. This is a Chinese yeah. rose. It's again a species rose. Okay. Um, and it's renowned for its um, color variation. Oh. Because when the buds um, are small, it um, is... Uh, kind of yellowy red and then it goes this really strong pink when when it's when it's mature it's very pretty this is a pretty wet bed this is an extremely dry bed <laughs> because of the trees right um but this actually it's the drainage somehow works to make this quite a damp bed huh. it, it it varies you know you have to kind of live with these things before you you know, what, and which... move things around accordingly. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. And this is a very mossy part of, yes. the, gra of the grass, but in fact, it uh, it's green. <laughs> this almost looks like a blue spruce. It, it's a blue. Um, uh, oh, that's beautiful. It's it's a blue um, sequoia. Really? Yes. It's, yeah. And oh, that's it, just. I use it. It's very difficult to manage. Yeah. And so um, I found that if I try to carve it too much, it um, breaks on me. Ah. So I use it for Christmas decorations. Okay. And it's a gorgeous. You know, it's a blue Christmas decoration. It's. it's, it's Interestingly enough, it's grafted, and this. Uh, every once in a while, it gets away on me. This is the original sequoia, green sequoia plant. Uh, so that's the rootstock there. That is the rootstock there. there, yeah. Huh. And the graft must be just above that. And this, you know, this kind of languishes, you know. <laughs> so it's not a it's, sequoia in the, what you would think of a sequoia. It's more weeping it's sequoia. A, it's a weeping ah, sequoia, yeah. That's and this, beautiful. you know, this, it, it's, it, it's a bit of a management challenge. It's but it's probably, really beautiful. I, I bet it's worth it, though, because I've never beautiful. seen anything yeah, like that it's, before. It's, and here's a close-up of your red... That is, yeah, that's the paratia. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's gorgeous. It is. It is really gorgeous. And later in the, in the fall, it will have remnants of the green, and it'll also have yellow. Wow. So it can have about three or four colors um, in, in the leaves. It's and it starts to drop in in late late August. Wow, really that early? Yeah, you can see. And then see. it lasts. Is this one of its leaves here? Yes, that's one of its leaves. That's, Isn't that's that beautiful? gorgeous. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah, I'm taking that home. <laughs> yeah, right. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> so this is a dry bed, and I've tried to keep it to be um, 
quite a lot of native plants. Yes, what's um, this one here? I don't recognize that's a that spirea. one. This is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's, it, it's, I try to keep it small. I've got a cotoneaster in there. Love them. And um, yeah. also I've got a few formiums, red formiums that are there, and a few clematis that are not entirely happy, yeah. but seem to, I think again, they're short of sun. Uh, you know, it's uh, tricky to Well, it's make probably sure. this time of year they're dying back. Mine looks like that right now, too. Oh, does it? it yes. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. And this here, is this a salmon berry? Uh, that is um, uh, ribes, uh, 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 white icicle. The, the, um, um, oh. the flowering currant. Flowering. From, yes, it's from yes. UBC. UBC developed this of white course. icicle flowering currant. So it has white, um, white draping flowers, and it really shows up back here quite nicely. Oh. Yes. And yep. what else is happy is is this um, uh, pulmonaria, which is lungwort. This here? Um, yeah, it's white blooming. Usually, okay. you know, it's soldier oh, yeah. sailors. It's got pink and blue, ah. but I. It doesn't have pink and blue, this one. It's only white, oh, isn't which is funny? quite attractive. Yeah. And this yeah. is a little hebe. Well, actually, this isn't a hebe. This is a, it's a parahebe. Um, it used to be called Veronica. This one happens to be white, and I have one over here, which is blue. Oh. And there's one at the front that's blue. And mm. it's, it keeps blooming and blooming and blooming and blooming. It just blooming. keeps going, eh? <laughs> Doesn't just, care what the season? No, it just is amazing. Wow, lovely. <laughs> yeah, and this well, it is, looks like it this, worked out well. This is just recently purchased. It's Karen Lancy. Mm -hmm. um, and Karen is, a, well, she's done that uh, uh, heron the at the heron. back. I, that was, yeah, yeah beautiful. And this is hers as well. I, That's I just really I love it. something. Yeah. It echoes the curvature of the, uh, yes. uh, of the, uh, the rebar arch. Have you got and, a dogwood back there? Uh, yes, it is. It is a dogwood and a viburnum. And these oh. are um, uh, eastern uh, uh, huckleberries. Are they? Yes, yeah. Oh, and sometimes can you eat those? I will um, make them uh, um, available to, to the garden club um, because they will grow nicely from cuttings. They're good. <laughs> they are. They're very yeah, tasty. Yeah, they're not like the red ones we have that just. They taste just like the red ones. They do taste like the yeah. red ones, yeah. Oh, that's good. I love huckleberries. Yes. I hope I find Huckle some when we go camping. Yes. Well, and they're less common here than they were in Vancouver. Oh. We came over from Vancouver mm -hmm. uh, 20 really? years ago. Oh, I wouldn't have thought that. <laughs> yeah. Funny. And this here I've seen because a friend of that's mine... That's a uh, Brugmansia. And is I it called a trumpet flower? Yes, it is. Yeah. And it has one bloom. And I think it heard me say that if it didn't perform properly this uh. year, it was going. Get <laughs> yeah. the axe. And so it has one bloom. There you go. <laughs> that's pretty late, though. It's very late. Well, yeah. and, and that seems to be what happens. I don't feed stuff probably as much as, as many people do. Mm. I really hope that all of the compost that I use and right. various things will feed things adequately. Mm -hmm. But there's some things that really, really are hungry. Yeah. And um, I, I probably, if I, uh, I fed them They'd produce more, more actively, I, I now, would have this more have success. Now, does this have to come in, does yes, it not? Yes, it does. Yeah, well, it's it'll be tender. blooming when you've got it inside, so it that'll work out nicely. That's right. And it's Good very, work. It's very scented. Yeah. Extremely oh, I didn't scented. Know that. Yes, yeah. There's there's ones that the flowers hang down, and yes. those are Brugmansia, and the Daturas have the flowers that uh, point upwards. Oh, okay. I haven't seen one that points upwards. So yeah. this is a downwards one. Yes, right? this yeah. is a downwards one. Yeah. Lovely. And pretty. this is a gift from a friend, and it is incredible. It's it's a um, pineapple pineapple lily they call it. Really? Um, yeah, and it's. Uh, it's quite exceptional. Well, it does look like a pineapple. I give yeah, you that. Yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> That's right. Now, when this isn't seeded, does it have little yellow flowers or something on it? It it has purple flowers. The purple, purple flowers. Wow, yeah. Okay. You can still see the remnants of the purple oh, yeah. flowers. Neat. Yeah, and then the purple flowers match the purple spots yeah. <laughs> on the stem. It's a little like an arum. You know, the arums are. Our stem, the stems have those yeah. colors as well. Yeah. This is the remnants of um, uh, 
the Chilean plant uh, that is monstrous. The leaves are the leaves are about this big, but they feel like sandpaper on the back. So um, they were failing, and so I cut the leaves all back. Um, and I usually put the leaves over the uh, over the base, um, but I didn't this time. I think I'll just dump dump. Uh, leaves on top of it but it is uh, a Chilean plant so and it's it's monstrous and then this is um, uh, a little bog um, uh, it doesn't look great at this time of year but it has a lot of plants in it that love moisture wow. and so it's underlined I dug it out and it's underlined by um, a piece of plastic that I had from a mattress bag. <laughs> oh, very good. <laughs> Which is very heavy plastic. Yes, I'm it into is. recycling Me too. majorly. Yeah. And I like your stilby and the goldenrod. That's yeah. lovely to see goldenrod. Yes. You just yes. don't you don't see it. You don't? My yeah. daughter loves it for her flower arrangements. Yeah. 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 And beautiful. This is interesting. This is Artemisia, Lactifolia. It's the only Artemisia that really likes wet feet. See the chest passages will be composted side? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> it's quite delightful. <laughs> that came from Woodchart Gardens. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> this is a, a pittosporum, um, and in the spring, it has tiny, tiny purple flowers in the leaf axles. It's gorgeous, but you have to walk right up to it and look at it. Um, and the color, uh, the variegated color is, is really, really lovely. It is. Yeah, really lovely. One of my Master Gardener friends did identify the cultivar for me, but I've forgotten. I have to write it down. <laughs> it looks frosty. Yeah, yes, it does. <laughs> and, and this, of course, is a hardy hibiscus, just ah. finished now. Yeah, it's a double one, and and it's it, it was here, and it it seems to me a little odd a double hibiscus because it doesn't really look like hibiscus. It looks more like a um, rose of some sort, but um, but it's it's charming, and and it's a lovely color um, in this space. Wow. This is blueberry alley. I've got ah. blueberries of various kinds. I think they don't again have quite enough sun. Okay. It's always a battle between tall things that are lovely mm -hmm. and things underneath them that need sun and it's yeah. it's it's quite tricky. Few heathers look like they like it here though. They do like it here. Yeah. And this is Molina grass. Um, ah. the heathers, the Molina grass and the blueberries are all acid lovers. So I do feed them with acid fertilizer. Oh, very good. And so they 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 like it. The, yeah. the lack of sun though probably is uh, uh, something that makes it sparse. Although I do get rather nice cropping on these ones, um, on these ones in yeah. the front. These are all different um, times of the year. The latest one is here and the earliest one is there. Oh, so there's good. probably about four different kinds of blueberries. And this is where I grow my tomatoes under the overhang. Right. And, um, and then the night temperature, which is a problem here with tomatoes, um, the wall reflects, because it's west, it reflects heat in, oh, the, in, the wind, in the nighttime. Right. And so they, they're quite successful. They're pretty well finished now. Yeah. And this <laughs> this mess is my neighbors think I'm really quite funny because I wanted decrepit um, hoses. Hoses. And, yeah. The idea of the decrepit hoses is that uh, my lovely little fence that contains the bog right. is is deteriorating and it's rotting away. So I'm going to use rebar six inches apart ah. and weave the hoses <laughs> what a great in idea. various color um, yeah. to make the little retaining wall for the bog garden. But it's a bit too leafy right now and I think maybe it's a kind of winter project winter when project. things die down sure. a little bit. Um, we'll come we'll back see. next year and we'll okay. film that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And this is uh, honeysuckle, and yeah. it's made its way up into the uh, blue spruce. Lovely. And also there's a campsus vine that's also made its way high, the, way up this high. This here? Yes, that's campsus. And Does it's it the, have a it's common the, name? Uh, trumpet flower. Oh. Um, it's uh, a red trumpet oh, flower. I can see a flower up there. Okay, yeah. 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 I think a seed, too, is uh, so... 
Yeah. Wow, look at that. It goes, oh, my God. It goes God. way up there. It, it's it's yeah. incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's and amazing. It, it likes heat, and it's amazing that it's doing that well. Yeah. It doesn't flower a great deal, but it flowers enough, just so you can see uh, nice. the flower. Doesn't. You know, interestingly enough, on the invasive plant list now is those little um, cyclamens um, that mm. are that are everywhere because the corums are the color of soil so that they get moved when people dump their soil in a randomly in a place where they think you know this is a good place to dump soil um then the cyclamens come and they're gorgeous of course but uh, they probably take over fawn lilies and other things that belong right they do yes i think that's too bad this is a president roosevelt uh rhododendron it's one of the few rhododendrons that have a variegated leaf isn't that neat yeah yeah and it's not sick (laughs) and it looks like it's gonna bloom now well those are those are set for next for next for the next spring wow okay and this is a callistamon which is an Australian uh, plant. I was going to say, I recognize yeah. this. We sold a bunch of things from Australia at the plant sale oh, a yes. couple of weeks ago, and a lot of them looked like this. My daughter actually had success in growing the seeds. Oh, really? Yeah, she did. Well, maybe I'll just, you know. Yeah, yeah <laughs> take some. Yeah, you can. Well, interestingly enough, this plant has got, you know, these are the really old seeds from years, right. a few years ago. Yeah. And then the more recent, the more recent seeds. Are and then the seeds from this year oh, are, yeah, it, it's a very, so it's a cool. fascinating plant. Yeah. And it has pretty nice greenery, too. It you smells know. good, too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. that's the rosemary. Yeah. I think you're smelling the rosemary. <laughs> yes, and I under, am, but... Underneath this is a Vancouver, which is a, a native plant, which it's, I think it's called this inside here? out flower. Yes. Okay. And it's just a little tiny white flower, and it's a great ground cover. Huh. This is, this is a bit of a management challenge, uh, as often things are. This is a forsythia. Yeah. And it is a double flower forsythia. Wow, okay. Which is really lovely. Um, I have taken some cuttings because forsythia does root very, very easily. Yes, yeah, so you can take a stick and stick it in the dirt yeah. and it'll root. Yeah. I did, oh, I did that <laughs> once. I used it as markers for a vegetable garden. <laughs> I've done that too, and then all of a sudden it's sprouting. Yeah, yeah that's right. I know, it's pretty funny. And then this Calamagostis uh, grass is. Yeah. Carl Forrester is the cultivar name. I think I bought that at a, a plant sale. At oh, a, probably. Um, we had a lot of grasses. Yeah. yeah. Um, year, a few years ago. Right. Yeah. It's a, it's a lovely grass. It's, it's past its best before at this time of year. Yeah. yeah. And there's lots of irises. Uh, the deer don't like irises. This is deer zone. I didn't zone. know that. Yeah, this is yeah. deer zone. They don't like formium. They don't like lavender. They don't like irises. They don't like smelly and things, and they don't like furry things. That's right. right? Yeah. Yes. And there's lamb's ears out on the oh, uh, on, the, on the other uh, side, the driveway. Oh yeah. And this is obricia, which is really very nice. I was nice. going to ask you yeah. about that. What on and earth is that? And it's blooming now, and it's got yellow yeah. highlights, oh, which is rather lovely. It's- gorgeous and the bees are here and you think bees would be hibernating now yeah, but you know they're here so. yeah. i'm sorry is there a common name that i might remember no i don't think it has a common name can i, I hear it again o- obrisha. obrisha obrisha i gotta find me yeah. one of those this yeah. is a variegated one it's yeah, um, and beautiful. it's blooming now which is yeah. lovely it yeah. tends to do, this, do these big shoots like and, and my daughter cuts those for her flower arrangements so you've it works got a well. lucky daughter I say. <laughs> I have, I have. <laughs> and then we've done because this is a parking space we've yeah. we've done these uh, grow through pavers here yeah, and i, I just that. simply mow them yeah i i love your checkerboards you've, you've got a couple of them in the yes, back where you've I got do. grass and then yeah. a yeah, I, I really like they're, that. They're put uh, consciously where the path goes, you mm-hmm. know, where I want people to walk. Right. That was That is very, very sodden right at the mm-hmm. base of the stairs. Right. And so it really helps the grass survive to have those pavers. Oh, yeah, it's very And cool I have that. I, I, at the garden club, I introduced the members to the little um, wheeled uh edger that I have Mm. and um, it's it's wonderful and it does help 
you know, you need to to be able to edge those pavers to right. make them look good because otherwise the grass grows yeah. over them. Yeah. So it, it works just like a charm. Yeah. Oh. Well, it, it varies so much with deer mm -hmm. because one place where they won't browse something, they will browse in a different place, the same plant. <laughs> it's very God. curious, very curious. It is. Looks great. So anyway, that is my garden. Well, it's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> You've got very mer many memorable things. Um, I I can't imagine this must be this must keep you so so busy. You've got so many plants. Uh, it does. I'm glad to have the help because yeah. uh, you know it it's harder as you get older. Yeah. Um, but. I adore it, and I lose myself in the garden. Yeah. You know, I, I just forget about so many other um, problems that, yeah. that, that it's great. Yeah. It's great, yeah. Well, you have a beautiful garden, and I'm, I'm sure it's only going to get more beautiful as fall progresses. Well, it does. Yeah. It does, and it's nice. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for coming. So thank you so much, <laughs> Donna. It's been yeah. lovely seeing you, and hopefully we'll see you soon. We're hoping that, you know, uh, the new year will allow us maybe to meet in some way. That would be nice. Because yeah. I know the Garden Club members are pining to see each other. So yes. hi, everybody, and <laughs> bye from Donna yeah. and, and, and Janet. We'll see you next time. Yes, bye now. <laughs>